Hey everyone, it's so nice to see you all and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And so I want to say that I am taking a step further back from the Myers-Briggs type indicator. And this has been happening for years now. I've been moving further and further away from the topic of the MBTI in my videos and uh, I think uh, some of you might have noticed, not all of you have, but uh, in the past I spent a lot of time making videos saying how to know if you're an INFP or an INFJ. How to know if you're an INFJ or an INTJ. These kind of videos were focused on just uh, the pure fascination with MBTI personnel types. What are they like? What definitions of introvert or introverted intuition are most correct? What's the right way to define an INTP and how do you know if you're this type or that type? So for the longest time I've been fascinated with the subject of personality types. Are there personality types and for like to what extent are we defined by our personality types? And what can we learn from ourselves by studying our personalities? Now I'm uh, saying uh, and the main reason is that the MBTI goes against uh, Carl Jung's core ideas and uh, his uh, core message. Over the past few years, I've spent a long time reading all of Carl Jung's old books and going through a lot of his works. The three core messages that he had uh, that go against the messages of the MBTI are as follows. First of all, Jung did not see type as this binary dichotomy that you were either or. He didn't see the world as reduced to either introverts or extroverts, two different opposing poles on a scale. He didn't see the world in these simplified scales where you were either an intuitive or a sensor, either a feeler or a thinker, either a judger or a perceiver. To him, personality was a developed preference and personality trait and you could have more or less of it. You could be more or less introverted or more or less extroverted. These are things that have been missed in the MBTI and the MBTI will simply say that hey, if you scored 51% on extroversion over introversion, well you're an extrovert and now we're going to tell you you're an extroverted personality type. Now every single definition and description you'll find online will focus on you being an extrovert and this like desire to work from stereotypes and from uh, two point scales uh, of course it makes things easy it makes it super easy if you just want to get people into a job and into the corporate environment and just get people to quickly find out who they are and to get them to find their life and uh, purpose and everything, you just immediately have it done, like McDonald's. You go and you order a burger, you get your burger, and you eat the burger, and then it's good, and then you're happy. But that's how not how it is for most people, right? Because I know a lot of people in the community that have spent years trying to figure out their personality type, and they keep doubting between a set few personality types. They're not sure if they're ENFPs or ENTPs. They're not sure if they're ENFPs or INFPs. They can't decide and they feel lost and they feel like, wow, I don't know myself. I don't trust myself. I don't know who I am. I feel like I'm doubting between all of these types and I can't make up my mind. And, you know, um, I can't see myself objectively and I don't know what to do about it. It's times like this when it's good to remember that Carl Jung, once again, did not believe that uh, every single person could be divided into 16 distinct categories. He didn't even work from personality types to begin with. He worked from sliding scales. He saw it as gradual. You could have developed preferences. Every person was unique and every person had a unique preference for a set of cognitive functions and a unique way of developing themselves and thinking and acting and being. The second part I'd like to talk about is the idea of type as something fixed. Now the MBTI has been quick to put out the idea that the MBTI types never change. You have one personality type, you're going to have that personality type for the rest of your life and your preference is never going to change. No matter how much time you spend developing or working on yourself, you're going to be always the same person deep down. This 
a specific personnel type and it can be tracked through the MBTI and through their personality tests and it's going to stay consistent throughout life. Now, this first of all, it's been discounted by general experience. We know that personality test results constantly fluctuate and change. But we also know it goes against Carl Jung's own ideas on the topic. Carl Jung saw that personal type preference could change. And it's much easier to accept this if you see personal type as a sliding scale. If you recognize that there are some people in the world that are more close to the middle on introversion and extroversion, and some people that are more close to the uh, the middle on intuition and sensing. It's more easy to accept that, hey, this person that was already quite close to the middle in the first place might, through consistent work and effort or changes in their environment or lifestyle, change their personality type. So personality type change might be possible. We don't know exactly how easy it is. It's most likely very difficult. Carl Jung spoke of it as possible, true. Tra trauma or true difficult experiences and he also recognized that uh, it could happen through consistent effort and work but it is important to say that it's it's possible and i'm going to talk more about why it's important to say this uh, later on but i want to end with the third point that you want to think about and that is that type theory cognitive function theory is not meant to be a fixed science. So what I mean with this is that personality type theory is not meant to be this, you know, genetic uh, situation that's happening in the brain exactly the way Carl Jung predicted. The eight cognitive functions are not supposed to be evenly divided throughout the brain and to work according to exactly the ideas that Carl Jung anticipated. <laughs> the MBTI types don't exist necessarily as scientific facts or realities inside our brains. Um, science will most likely never show the existence of 16 distinct personality types in its uh, yeah, general findings or research. To Carl Jung, personality type was not meant to be a fixed science or some kind of ultimate fact of life. He had not discovered that human DNA and personality by <laughs> genetics could be simplified into just 16 different forms of DNA or genetic indicators of type. That was not what he thought at all. He never <laughs> really touched on that topic at all. So. Why are we so obsessed with the MBTI as a scientific reality? Why do we want personality type to be something that we can ultimately prove and find by using microscopes? Why do we want it to be something scientific? Well, of course, we want it to be scientific because uh, that would give a stronger validity to what we're doing. But to Carl Jung, that was not necessarily a necessity to begin with. We don't need the MBTI to be a scientific reality. We don't need personality type or cognitive function theory to be a scientific framework. We only need it, need it to be a functional toolkit and language to help people discuss and understand personal differences in their behavior compared to, for example, their partner or friend or people in their life. The MBTI doesn't need to be an ultimate science or scientific fact. It should just be a way to talk and create a conversation about how we think and how we feel and how we see the world. And as science progresses and as we learn more throughout the work of the big five and throughout different systems, the MBTI should adapt its ideas and definitions and theories. And we should adjust our knowledge about ourselves because we're going to find out a lot about people over time and we're going to learn more and more about how the brain works and how we make decisions and how our feelings work and things like that. So the MBTI should just be an evolving toolkit and framework that you could uh, use to loosely categorize and discuss personal differences in how you think and how you feel compared to other people. And so the question is, what's next? Like, is this it? Are there no more MBTI videos from Eric Thor? Is this all over? And uh, am I closing my channel and putting everything down? And, you know, no, first of all, I'm keeping all my old content up there, or at least most of it. I've actually hit a lot of it, uh, but I'm keeping most of it up there. 
because I still feel that the message I gave in that video was still focused on personal growth and flow. And second, uh, because I gave advice and I asked questions and I brought up topics that I hope help people introspect and understand themselves better. And if I look at the comments on my videos, I can see that it really did. It did. Most people who took my, who watched my videos felt more understood, felt more accepting of themselves, felt happier and felt a stronger sense of direction and purpose as of watching my videos. Thank you so much for your feedback and uh, for being here.